I always say I go into things and I don't really know what I'm doing. And I think that's the best way. You just have to allow things to develop, not to try and structure things too much. Just be very open to what you're going to find and see. And I like that's part of the magic of photography for me. which is one of the UK's most diverse cities where I think over 90 different nationalities now live um, and I was the only white child in my nursery class. Uh, so I grew up with a lot of different cultures and different religions and that was completely the norm for me. Um, I remember when I went to go study photography at Brighton I was one of very many white middle class people and for me that was strange and I felt into that alien. Um, so I and always, I think from growing up in such a diverse city, I became really fascinated by all the other different cultures and what was going on. I've always wanted to go behind people's doors and see, get an insight into other people's lives. And I've, I realised that um, photography allowed me to hang out with people basically and engage with them in another way that I wouldn't otherwise do and learn. Uh, so I and I'd already always done art, but it. So it wasn't photography from the beginning that really appealed to me. It was about engaging with people um, and having a kind of creative response and sharing what I learned through my engagements with people. So that's what I, I found that photography seemed to allow me to do. Going back to Birmingham, I was trying to find a place where there were most different uh, religious communities all living together. And so I found this street called, and I it was guided by everybody to this street called Soho Road. And on Soho Road, just an example of the diversity, even within the Buddhist community, there are Thai Buddhists, Sri Lankan Buddhists, Vietnamese Buddhists, and Indian Buddhists, all with their own temples and all with their very different ways of practicing and their different ways of relating to me. Uh, there are also Rastafarians, Hare Krishnas, uh, Sikhs, Hindus, Christians of all denominations. It really was pretty much everybody. And so I began uh, sort of journey along Soho Road, hanging out and staying with as much as possible these different communities over about two years. I began this journey, this two year journey on Soho Road, by staying in the Catholic convent, uh, which was just at the bottom of that two mile stretch of road. And I stayed with the nuns and they were actually giving me a real uh, insight into all the different communities there because they were working with a lot of the different immigrant communities in the area, which with everybody's sort of influx of new immigrants that are coming into this area, I know it's a history of uh, new immigrant communities because it's an area of quite cheap housing. Um, new religions seem to be coming with all these new immigrant communities. So this, this dinner, this annual dinner, um, happens in the town hall in Birmingham and it's always hosted by the Lord Mayor. And it's quite an interesting experience to be there I was quite, it took quite, it was quite hard to get uh, to be invited or to allowed to photograph and it only lasted about an hour because all these people were so important, had so many other things to get on to, they sort of disappeared quite quickly um, and the, the packaging of food was that, was fa fascinating, every, the Baha'i, uh, Buddhist, Jewish, Christian, Muslim and Sikh and Hindu and Jain communities represented and they all had their own food in very different packaging prepared and given to them for this dinner. We all naturally adapt ourselves to when we're engaging with people to be able to communicate. It was quite difficult in, on Soho Road because I was going from one community to the next. Often within one day I would wake up with the Hare Krishnas and dance around a plant chanting at 5am and then I would go visit the Vietnamese monks in the temple down the road and then in the evening I would be with the Jesus Army Evangelical Christians at a baptism in the local park and they used to have this tent and a big pool and they used to baptise people in the park. And so every community 
often languages, but I didn't know all different languages, but it was just the language of uh, etiquette within each community you have to relate very differently to. And I'd never really thought of how much I'd, I wasn't aware of how much we do it naturally until I did this project because I was jumping between communities so quickly. That was quite exhausting. I find it very difficult to introduce myself as a photographer because I think it can, for most people's stereotype, I don't really fit it at all. I don't take that many photos and I don't have a huge desire to take photos all the time. Uh, actually, that took me quite a while when I was at university to get over the fact that I didn't want to do that. I felt I couldn't do photography if I didn't want to take a picture all the time. But for me, it's a lot, it's a lot of research behind that image. And it's not about formulating and seeing and designing that image with lighting and thing. It's about understanding what's important to show in a series of images and, and looking at a subject in depth, hanging around for a long period of time. And I think I, would, I see myself more as a, a documentary photographer or ideally I'd like to be called a storyteller or researcher. But people will put you in many boxes and if they're going to give you awards for being a photojournalist or an art photographer. You know, I'm quite happy for people to read me how they want to. But I feel more like a researcher, a visual researcher. Uh, the actual taking of the photographs is really only one part and it's kind of the beginning as well. Especially with the subject like this, um, I feel it's really important how I present it out there and what it's, it's opened up some amazing uh, avenues for me to engage with different communities and organise workshops and talks and seminars I've seen have been really quite powerful. I heard that one couple almost broke up in the gallery in London because of the discussion that the images brought up and the subject matters it raises, uh, which is for me really exciting. But it's also very much about life's path, what you've known and where life takes you, what projects you've come across to do. and. Always I feel that I need to realise what I can do that others can't, What's how, I'm, how I appear, how I'm represented in the world, how I'm seen by everybody. Um, even, you know, I know I'm of how old I look and that I'm small and I'm blonde and that I can do different things that, you know, a guy of 50, would have, he could do something else that I wouldn't be able to do. So I have to be very aware of that, I feel, as a photographer.